We're going to bring you some breaking news now out of the Clear Lake area. Houston police say they were called to check out a welfare. Andrea, she's she's not been charged just, just, woman just woman yet. We do know that within the last couple of hours, it happened in the house you see behind me here. The father is a NASA engineer. Police say while he was at work, his wife drowned their five children. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Our Killer Obsession with James and Crystal, your true crime connoisseurs. And if you're new here, thanks for joining us, and we hope you hit that subscribe button before you leave. All right, and today's story is about Andrea Yates. Yeah, this was a pretty popular media sensation when it all first went down, so I'm sure a lot of you have already heard of this story. But Andrea Yates, uh, she's a Texas woman who drowned all five of her kids. Wow. Yep. Man. In the bathtub in 2001. I'm a parent. I can't even imagine hurting my kids, let alone systematically drowning each one of them. Right. And like I like you said, being a parent could never, never fathom doing something like that to my own children. Man. No. And I, I mean, anyone. How does anyone do something like that? I, I mean, let absolutely. Let alone a mother. Absolutely. Right. Your to, mother's to... supposed to be your ultimate protector, you know. Right. And, and, you know, let's talk about children alone. You know, we're not supposed to hurt children, um, let alone uh, murder them. So Awful, terrible. how do you do that? Well, let's dig in and see if we get some answers. Absolutely. It's, this, this should be an interesting one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Andrea was born in Houston, Texas, uh, July 3rd, 1964, to Karen and Emmett Kennedy. She didn't have the childhood like we've heard, talked about before. She had a pretty good childhood. She was okay. a really good student, very successful in school. She was the high school valedictorian, actually. Oh, okay. Captain of her swim team. She was in the honor society. Like, really good, all-American type Texas kid. Okay. She did have some psych issues in high school. She mm -hmm. suffered from bulimia and depression. And okay. at some point had spoke to a high school friend about committing suicide. Oh, wow. Okay. So there's obviously some kind of uh, self-esteem or some kind of issues that she had amongst herself about herself. Exactly. Early on. Wow. She went to college. She went to the University of Texas for nursing. Uh, she ended up being an RN at the University of Texas Cancer Center. From mm -hmm. 1986 to 1994. Okay. So successful right. person. Right, right. Yeah. Sounds like she's, you know, having a normal, successful life. And, and yeah. yeah. She met her future husband at their apartment complex. Okay. Uh, his name is Russell Rusty Yates, referred to mostly as Rusty. Okay. Uh, they met in 1989. Rusty was a NASA engineer. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Nice. And an evangelical Christian. That comes into play a little bit later. Okay. Um, they married on April 17th, 1993 and being, this is what I was talking about, being very devout evangelical Christians, they do not believe in birth control. Okay. They okay. believe that God will give them as many children as they're supposed to have. Okay. They were quoted as saying they would seek to have as many babies as nature allowed. No. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. And in 1994, they welcomed their first son, Noah. Uh, and shortly after he was born, Rusty's job sent him to Florida. You know, they have a big uh, NASA center down there. Yeah, right. So they moved the family to Florida in a very small travel trailer. Okay. Um, not big fancy ones like we see nowadays. Right. A yeah. very small, yeah. typical camper. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Something that you'd probably normally do weekend trips with or exactly. something with family. But they was like, this is just what we're going to do is, this I, in. <laughs> I can, well, and... Part of their religious beliefs, they started following a couple out of Texas that believed in minimalism. Okay. You don't seek godliness by extraordinary things. Minimalism was best. Okay. So that's what they believed. All right. Right on, I guess. Right. So they moved to Florida um, and they had two more sons, Paul and John, over the next four years. So yeah. now they're a family of five. Okay. And they moved back to Texas. All right. And they're doing the thing, man. We got a NASA working at NASA. We got a registered nurse. I think and, she quit. And... She's a stay-at-home mom now. Okay. Well, yep. you know, she wanted to raise mom. the kids. You know, but was a nurse, stay at home mom, yep. um, working at NASA, doing our thing. Yep. Great life. Yep. Happy family. Wow. Okay. Uh, so when they got back, um, believing that the minimalist life was good, they but they needed to upgrade a little bit. They moved into a renovated bus. Okay. So, so they have their three boys and a bus. All right. Um, in 1999, they welcomed their fourth son, Luke. Okay. So now we got four sons. Mom and dad in a bus. Okay. And it's uh, what, about 10 years or so they've yeah. been together. Yep. And okay. 
Yep. So June of 1999 uh, is when kind of everything started to turn south. Oh, okay. She called Rusty at work, said she was feeling super anxious, and just basically stated, I need help. Mm, okay. So he came home. She was having like a nervous breakdown. Maybe the kids are too much for her. So he decided he wanted to take her and the kids okay. to her parents' house. Okay. Leave them there for a while and thought maybe she would feel more at home. Mom and her mom and dad are there to help grandma and grandpa. Yeah, absolutely. A little break, you know, and, yeah. uh, you know, a little mental uh, relaxation, a little physical relaxation. Exactly. I mean, it's, it's taxing being a parent. If, it you, is. if you're a parent, you know, it, it can be taxing. And sometimes just the, the little break would, would help. Well, that wasn't enough, apparently. Oh, so man. when everybody was sleeping, she took 40 trazodone pills in an attempt to kill herself. Wow. What's what's trazodone? Trazodone is like a sleeping pill. Okay. But the, her mom found her, took her to the emergency room, and she was placed uh, on a psych unit. She was diagnosed with major depression disorder, mm. single episode severe. Mm. Mm. Okay. So she's already had depression in the past. Mm-hmm. Having these babies and everything is stirring oh, things back right, up. Right, right on. Yeah. Postpartum depression is yeah, a yeah, serious and, situation. And then that's added on top of what she was already had, her already underlying condition exactly, as well. Yep. So, yeah. so she told the nurse that she has her family to live for okay. and she wants to go home. So she's no longer suicidal. Right. I mean, that sounds fair. You know, sounds like something a sound and, and right-minded person would say. Right. Absolutely. So on June 18th, they had a family meeting with the doctor and the doctor wrote, quote, Rusty is aware and accepting of his wife's problems and is more comfortable calling her condition postpartum depression than major depression. Mm. So I don't know if Rusty mm. didn't want to say she had a mental problem. It was like a denial, like my, yeah. not my wife. Exactly. Like uh, that type of thing. Right. He also wrote, Rusty was more concerned that his wife was, quote, struggling with the concept of salvation. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's that's wild. I mean, right. So I don't know what the religious aspect to him had to do with it, mm. but he didn't think it was postpartum depression or anything having to do mm. with the stresses of her kids. It was having to do with God. Wow. Okay. Uh, um, I, I'm not gonna knock people's beliefs, but that sounds pretty uh, off off the, the, off the topic, rails there. Right? I mean, yeah. Right. Not not what we're talking about. No. No. On June 24th, Rusty requested that she be discharged to family's care, and he agreed to watch her 24-7. So he wanted to be in charge of making sure she was okay. This is the guy who says there's there's nothing it's wrong salvation. with her. It's her it's and her God. Salvation. Yeah. We'll take care of it. Um, it also says that he is aware that she was as, at risk of harming herself again. Mm. Okay? Mm. So he knew all the struggles, supposedly, right. that she was going home with. Wow. Uh, the doctor prescribed her Zoloft and released her into his care. Mm. Wow. Not much you can do. Really, insurance plays a lot into it. It was stated at some point that insur it was time insurance was up and it I was mean, time and to that's go home. That's one of the unfortunate and true things about our system and, um, and here in insurance America. Insurance dictates it all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and mental doesn't... health is not really prioritized right. in our country. Absolutely. It's just, I feel like it's still just now being more talked about and openly talked yeah. about, even though we have a Less long way a to stigma. go. But yeah. Yep. So the doctor that let her go was aware that they lived in a bus and reported it to CPS. Oh, wow. Okay. I don't know. Back then it was different. There wasn't this huge RV community like there is nowadays. I mean, that's true. So they thought it was a not not a good living situation. But CPS okay. said there was no abuse or neglect and that they would know there would be no further inquiry. Okay. So the doctor took that report and she wrote, important place in Yates chart. Mm. So they placed it in there for future and it okay. stayed there for two years until all this stuff happened and it came up again uh, in court. Yeah, okay. Wow. So three weeks after she was released into Rusty's care, you know, he's supposed to be watching her 24 seven and somebody's always supposed to be with her. She flushed all her meds down the toilet. Oh no. And then okay. decided to try and slit her own throat. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Wow. So nothing was ever fixed, obviously. Wow. Nothing was I mean, helping. No, it sounds like it's done nothing but get worse. Right. So she, back to the hospital. When she was asked why she tried to hurt herself, she said, quote, I had a fear I would hurt somebody. I thought it better to end my own life. Oh, my goodness. She was also saying she was having obsessive thoughts about the kids and oh. raising them and how they would turn out and quoted, it's a big responsibility. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Yeah. So she was af afraid that they would turn up into bad people and not yeah, God fearing. Yeah. She she was obviously um you know deep inside of her own head with her issues and Exactly. Wow. 
The doctor diagnosed her with postpartum psychosis this time. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah, a little bit more severe. Yeah. Doctors recommended electroshock therapy. Holy cow puppy. Still used today, although not as commonly used like it was back in like the 60s and 70s. Wow. But it is still used. That's wild. I would not expect that to still be used nowadays because, I mean, come on, unless there's something solid, it doesn't work. It just, it's got to well, fry your brain, right? It does work. Does for it? people in catatonic states. Okay. All yep, right. Severe catatonic states. It does work. Wow. Yep. But that's not what this is. Nope, so we probably shouldn't is. be shocking this woman. Nope. They thought maybe it would just reset mm. something. I'm it, not really and sure. This is back when they're kind of still experimenting ish, right? Trying to figure stuff out still. Yeah, with mental illness. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's all still being figured I out. I mean, yeah. But she did refuse the electroshock therapy. So did Rusty. They said, no, that's not what we're going to do. So instead, they gave her a cocktail of meds this time. Oh, We're going to try a whole slew of stuff, mix it all up in there. They mm. gave her Haldol, which is like an antipsychotic, Cogentin, Effexor, and Wellbutrin. They're all mood stabilizers, antidepressants type of medications. My goodness. And take probably they're probably mixing them uh, multiple a day. Oh, yeah. How you're taking a lot. dangerous. Holy yep. cow. And I would assume at first it probably made her like a zombie. Right. You know? Yeah, right. So after three weeks in the hospital, she was released on like an outpatient type of program. It's kind of like work release. Okay. So she would go to an inpatient facility during the day and get treatment, talked with therapist, whatever. She would go okay. home at night to sleep and be with her family. All right. That sounds, I mean, So she did legit, that for a little right? while. Yeah, yeah. Okay. At this point in the story, um, home is now a three bedroom house. Rusty got rid of the bus. They needed a little more space, maybe okay. thinking this would be better for her. Okay, right on. Yeah. Got yeah. her a three bedroom home. Yeah, get her out of that cramped area. Um, yeah. I mean, let's be real. Some people, you can't do that. You cannot live in such a, uh, a small, um, space. small space. And then you have four boys running around like monkeys. You know, <laughs> it would I mean, right. drive you up a wall. Right. It yeah, really would. For sure. So maybe the, the more space would help, right? Yep. And now, you know, you can't be pregnant on these medications. Oh, they okay. all have terrible effects mm -hmm. on the fetus. Absolutely. So even though doctors discouraged her stopping these meds, she was still talking about getting off meds and trying to get pregnant again. Wow. Her doctor wrote that getting pregnant again would, quote, surely guarantee future psychotic depression. I mean. The hormone shift when wow. you're pregnant and after you have a baby and stuff, it's so dramatic. It would definitely change her psychosis I for mean, sure holy cow and I, I would i mean me personally um i would feel like after uh, many attempts at other directions and after so long and buying a new house and like nothing's working i think it might be time to listen to the professionals a little right. bit yeah give yourself a chance oh, wow well in 2000 she became pregnant with her fifth baby okay. a daughter named mary Okay. Uh, Mary was born um, after a year of Andrea being off meds. Mm. She was born November 30th, 2000. Okay. Three months after Mary was born, Andrea's father died. Oh, wow. Okay. So her depression came on extra strong this time. Gotcha. Feeling terrible. She stopped eating, stopped drinking, oh, man. stopped talking. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Rusty ended up taking her to the hospital, stating she couldn't survive another night at home. Oh, wow. She was that bad off. Wow. wow. Yeah. So she spent another 12 days in the hospital. Same thing. Cocktail and meds. Mm. You know, and they they let her go again into Rusty's care. Mm, 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 mm. Well, I'm sure. And like you said, you, you, you know, they're only going to keep you so long. Yeah. Insurance only lets you stay. Yeah. It doesn't matter periods. if you seriously need help or not. They're going to be like, well, who's paying for it? Exactly. Nobody's going to pay for this. You got to go. Bye. You got to go. Yeah, no, it's, it's Unfortunately. Yeah. A few weeks later, she was hospitalized again in a near catatonic state. My goodness. So like a zombie, nothing. Nothing's coming in or out. She's just sitting, staring. My goodness. Nothing. Ten more days in the hospital. Wow. And she was sent home again. Oh, no, man. Same situation. It sounds like it's really time for somebody to step in and be like, hey, she just needs permanent care. She does. I mean, holy cow. She needed some extra help big wow. time so it's there sounds like there's a lot building up to this break there was yeah and a wow. lot of things missed you know My or goodness help that could have been given that wasn't given yeah if our mental health system was better right um so yeah. on june 20th 2001 rusty went to work rusty's mother was scheduled to be there about an hour after he went to work to help andrea for the day because she's supposed to have constant supervision all right so now we have um rusty's mom coming over yep, and helping and, out and assisting yep. yep so grandma's <laughs> supposed to come help but andrea 
knew this. She knew she had about an hour window. Mm. So she waited for her husband to leave, locked up the family dog, and filled a bathtub full of water. No, oh, no. Mm-hmm. She grabbed two-year-old Luke first and drowned him. My goodness. Then dressed him and placed him in her bed and covered him with a sheet. Holy cow, okay. Yeah, she proceeded to do the same to three-year-old Paul and mm. five-year-old Jen. Mm, my goodness. Placed all babies in her bed together. Wow. Then she grabbed six-month-old Mary and was drowning Mary. And at that time, seven-year-old Noah came in, the oldest boy. Oh. He said, what's wrong with Mary? And oh. he's watching and he, then he no. realizes what's going on. Oh, no. So he attempts to run. Mm-hmm. But she caught him. She mm. grabbed him and caught him and drowned him in the tub next to his dead oh, baby sister. Oh, my goodness. That's terrible. That is terrible. That's horrible. It's awful. She left Noah floating in the tub and mm. then placed Mary in John's arms in, his, in her bed. Wow. She proceeded to then call the police and then Rusty. Wow. So she never got Noah out of the bathtub? Nope. My goodness. Nope. But so, wow. That's, that's to me, that's interesting. Why? You know, yeah. um, you put everybody else, dressed them, put them in bed in a comfortable position. Um, Maybe physically not? taxing. Maybe she didn't have any more energy. Man. I don't know. Hmm. That, that's a hardcore psychotic break that's but she knew yeah you know it, she waited for rusty to leave she 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 broke but she had a plan yeah for her break she had said hmm. during some interviews with the police that she thought like satan had taken her kids over there was a lot of religious psychosis okay. as well okay. that played into okay. it she thought they were going to turn up to be demons okay. you know a lot of strange talk like that yeah March 2002, Andrea pled guilty by reason of insanity. Mm. The jury found her guilty. Well, I, I would imagine. I mean, there's... Yeah, uh, guilty of murder, and she was sentenced to life in prison. Mm. But in January 2006, her conviction was overturned due to Dr. Park Dietz admitted he had given false testimony at trial. Oh, wow. What's so the up, whole th- Doc? Right, right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So the whole thing was overturned. She got a retrial. Wow. She pled the same. Okay. Uh, not guilty by reason of insanity. And okay. this time they found her not guilty. All right. You know, I mean, that's a tough one, right? I mean, because obviously there is There's a long track record. Of well, in all these documents problems. and the doctor saying, this is not what we want to do. Right. We don't want to send her home. There's something seriously wrong with this yeah. lady. Don't have any more children. Yeah. You know, this yeah, is not good for your alone, mental health. You know, yeah. the whole nine. And wow. Andrea was sentenced to the Kerrville State Hospital uh, where she remains. In 2022, she was up for consideration for release, but she refused it. She didn't want to leave. Oh, wow. Okay. That's that's a little abnormal, right? Yeah, you but know, I think, what else, I mean, what else does she have? She knows she has some serious psych issues. There's something yeah. very, very wrong with her. Ab- so absolutely. maybe she's getting the treatment she actually needs. Yeah, no doubt, really. And she knows it. And maybe she just knows now that she is safer to herself and everybody else mm-hmm. if she's just where she's at. Yep. A few years after all this happened, they got divorced. Rusty and Andrea got divorced. He did end up remarrying and have a, having a son, hmm. although he is now divorced again. So, single dad. Yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of history in his life, too, you know. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm sure that weighs a lot in his mental, too, and who knows how that changed his life. Right. How can you move on from that? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if I could move on and have another family and start over. Uh, I think that'd be, it would hurt my heart too much. I mean, yeah, you know... Um, you can only you can never hope you know what it feels like, but I, yeah. I you you feel like it would just it would break you. It you would know? definitely, and wow. maybe that's also why maybe Andrea is mentally healthy now. Maybe and maybe she's broken, so maybe mm. she's not ready to live a, a live a life. Yeah, maybe very she doesn't true. think she deserves a live a life. I mean that's possible too, you know. And it sounds like during her mental break, she had periods of times where she would think somewhat normal, even well, though she was in her depressive and and, and you know true. State. And they said actually. Between those times, she was a fantastic mom. She made homemade costumes for these kids. She would do bake sales. She was in all of their stuff, you know. So she was a good, involved mom. Yeah, absolutely. She had these periods, and that that eventually got worse and grew into a longer period of time of these mental breaks. Right. So now maybe that's where she's at now is in one of them periods of thinking somewhat straight. And they're like, well, you're up for parole. And she's like, no, forget about it. Yeah. Just please let me keep going, and we're, we're good here. Yeah, exactly. Wow, interesting. That's that's wild. That's yeah, a, a wild really one. sad story. Yeah. I, I mean, that is. I remember when it was on the news. It captivated the whole country, and everybody yeah, was yeah for sure watching for sure. Because I mean, come on, who can do that um, to children, let alone their own their children? Their own children. I yeah. mean, my goodness. 
and then dressing them, putting them in bed and everything. Yeah, right. It's there just, was some kind of caring to it, you right. know, too. Yeah, it's, not, it's like, she's, yeah, she's putting them to rest. Yeah, you know? right. Um, like maybe saving them from the, the demons she thought they were, Yeah. you know, yeah. being taken over by and she was sending them to heaven yeah. type of situation. Wild. Terrible. Wild. All right, that's going to do it for this episode of Our Killer Obsession. And we really hope you enjoyed it and you hit that subscribe button before you leave. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming episodes. And like always, you guys, we will see you next week. All right.